In this video, I'm going to show you how to program PN532 in the URT mode. You have to read one of the most important document called PN532 user manual, which is a 200 page document. And every page in the document has got wealth of information and that document is 100% have to be read by uh, anybody you know who wants to do programming for the PN532. So this is the document I have got it from uh, the PN532 the website and this document is available and this is open and so once you get this document so I would advise you start reading right from the page one. So however in this video I'm going to show you some of the important pages and some of the important points you have to keep in mind or some of the important places you know where you have to keep visiting in order to do programming in PN532. I might have read this document more than 10 times and every time you read you will end up getting uh, more and more information. So because this document also speaks on more about uh, the technical side about the signals and interrupts uh, for a developer will be more interested in the programming aspect so will be more interested in what byte sequence we have to send what is the structure of the command what is structure of the response you get from pn532 so you can directly jump to the page number 28 onwards and you can start reading a few pages from there I'm going to show you and I'm going to uh, give you a, a brief walkthrough with all these pages after that you're going to go to page number 99 and after this you know you're going to go to all over the place depending on which command uh, you're going to program so in page number 28 so the document speaks about the host controller communication protocol and in order to program PN532 the host that is our our program it has to send the commands in a fixed format so this is called as the frame structure and this is the command structure used by both the PC to the PN532 to send the command and when the PN532 sends the response back the same command structure is used so this command again you know when you start programming you will be using only the bytes so the very first byte must be 00, zero and this is called as a preamble byte followed by two bytes 00 ff which is called the start of the packet code followed by the length byte this is the packet length followed by the checksum and this is the one byte again followed by the TFI which says this is specific to PN532 frame indicator and all these you know from 00 to TF1 you can consider them as a header the actual command starts from PD0, PD1 onwards and finally in fact the command also includes the the command itself followed by all the parameters the command needs and finally it ends with the data checksum and followed by the post amble code 00. If you scroll down a bit there is again um, a lot of information here say for example uh, the first two bytes are very straightforward the preamble and the start code there's nothing just a, a fixed uh, values the length LEN's the length it indicates the number of bytes in the data field and this number includes the TF1 up to this uh, PDN and LCS in is a checksum again it is a, it's a bit of a, a XOR operation here and and this is not sorry exactly just a just a, a simple uh, math you have to do so the value of this byte when that is added to the len byte should give you zero the next is the tf1 
we have seen this these bytes you know in all my previous videos we have seen the d4 and d5 so since it's the same command structure used by uh, the both for the command as well as the response the value of tf tfi tells what kind of frame it is if it is a d4 it means the frame is going from host to the pn532 if it is a d5 so this is the frame from pn532 to host controller so this is the the command and the response so this follows the data and the data the first part of the data is a command i'm going to go through some of the commands and followed by all the command parameters the next is again a checksum so it's clearly mentioned here when you add everything from tf1 and up to the value of dcs you should get the sum zero so this is you know keep adding byte by byte by byte byte by byte you know and find out what should be the last uh, the value of dcs in order to get a zero and the last bit is uh, so this is the command structure now this is again the structure of the command used by both the host and pn532 and what you have noticed here is the length so the length of the command is just a byte so you cannot send more than 255 bytes so what if you have to send more than 255 so you will end up using an extended information frame okay again so once you know what all these bytes mean it's very easy to understand this so here so I'm not going to go through this you know the document is very clear I just have to have a one more uh, prefix FF so and also there's some information over here in this paragraph it says uh, PN532 always uses the suitable type of frame depending on the length if PN532 if the response is less than 255 it uses the the shorter form of this uh, frame if the response is more than 255 it uses the extended frame however the documentation says our program or the PC can send can use either of this structure and this is the this is called as acknowledgement acknowledged frame now this is the frame coming from uh, from the PN532 uh, to the host or from host to PN532 and from the development point of view this command is always coming from you know the PN532 this is like an acknowledgement so when you send this uh, command frame the first thing the PN532 does is it returns uh, the acknowledgement frame it means the PN532 has received your command but the command is still not processed and this is the negative acknowledgement frame if PN532 comes across you know any error and it will it will send this type of frame again the structure of this frame is fixed so when you program you can compare the value of the six bytes here to to determine whether there is any problem with the command and this is the error frame so if uh, pn532 has detected any error so it will return this frame so again so when you get a response from pn532 if you look at this pattern and if the pattern match it indicates it is an error so i think this one the nsek uh, it, it says you know this frame is used by the host to the pn532 to indicate the previous response has to be has not been successfully received so this is again you know is coming from the host usually you now when you when we start when you start programming you know you don't have to go at this level you know unless uh, uh, maybe once you master this pn532 programming concept you can start using this uh, nks frame so there is an example here and this example is for the command called get firmware version so if you go through this we know that you know this is uh, up to here this is a preamble and followed by the length there are two bytes and this is the LCS and this is uh, the D4 the TFI and these are the two bytes 
and followed by you know the DCS and other things just have to you know map these bytes you know go to this frame and see how this uh, bytes you know but as I said you know you you will be coming to this uh, document again and again now this is one of the most important thing to read you cannot miss this this diagram tells what exactly uh, how exactly the communication takes place always the command is initiated by the host here the host means you know our program so if I'm connecting PN532 to my PC using a USB so I will be sending the command through USB so the first arrow says is the command packet is reaching the PN532 so immediately the PN532 will send back an ACK frame and after some time the PN532 will return the response packet and the the last acknowledge here th this is an optional thing so after receiving this response packet the host controller can send a ACK so that tells PN532 that it's finished with the response probably it can clear the response buffer or the host can send NACK and according to this document you know I, I have not never tried this document oh, sorry I've never tried the NACK so if if the host sends NACK according to the document the PN532 uh, must send the last response packet so again on the right side you know there are some interrupts so I have never tried that so you know if you if you have done a programming or if you if you have studied something about interrupts so probably you now this signal says whenever PN532 is ready to send the response or some data to the host it will raise an event so again as you can see uh, this pulse coincides with this ACK frame and this pulse it coincides with the response packet so I think th that's all you know it just to be honest it's really simple so uh, but you know you have to get hang of this if you are when you start programming you will be playing with this uh, bytes and uh, will be making this uh, array of bytes and sending it to the PN532 and finally and the most important thing is before you start sending any command to PN532 you must uh, wake up the processor or you must wake up the board and that is done by either sending a very long preamble we know what the preamble is like sending 0 0 ff other things or you can start the command with the byte 0 5 I have used this uh, the second method as uh, 0 5 so we have covered the theory behind this uh, command structures and the wake up sequence and I'm going to show you how exactly all these things are put together and we're going to see you know practically uh, see all these uh, commands so this is the software you have seen uh, in my previous videos and I mentioned that this software is going to evolve gradually and now this is in version 1.1 and I have introduced the Mifair the ultralight tag so the first thing we do is after you make the connection I have connected here my board uh, PN532 so click on the connect to P53 uh, PN532 and you can see what has gone behind the scene if you click on the logs and what I have done here is you know I have sent the wake up bytes the dummy bytes that's a hex 5 5 I have sent two bytes of that followed by a few sequence of uh, zeros then followed by um, this is the command to get the PN532 the version number actually the response is, is shown you know somewhere in the footer of the screen you know which is not visible uh, using this uh, video recorder so I'm just going to pause and show you um, the output of this command so here at the in the footer you can see this is connected to COM4 and what you see here is the response from this uh, command 
So a lot of thing you know has happened here. So I mentioned you know when we referred to the page, uh, the page where we discussed about the preamble, the frame structure, and the sequence of the protocol. So we know that the first is the frame, the command frame. This is sent uh, by our software, the host, and next you can see that the PN532 has responded with an acknowledgement frame and followed by the response frame. So this command is um, prefixed with the byte 555 and this this has to be done only once. So um, and we're going to see the structure okay how we get this uh, with this command and and also you know I've j the output of this command is just a ASCII that that mentions about the the IC version and the revision and the different types of uh, the tag supported so we are going to look into this user manual as I mentioned before you will be going to user manual for every command structure if you go to this page number 65 in the document you can see all the commands uh, you can use in your programming so one of the command here we are going to see soon is called the get version uh, get firmware version and it also this line shows you what page number you can find more information about this and this is the command code if you just scroll through that uh, there are so many commands here so grouped under this is called the miscellaneous command and followed by the RF communication commands and the initiator commands so we don't have to use every command so it all depends on you know what you want to do so for example I never tried this uh, target commands because I never used this PN532 as a target so whereas I have used uh, some of these or most of these commands uh, the initiator means you know PN532 behaves as a, a reader writer whereas a target means this PN532 can behave as a as a tag so if you go back to this uh, get version command it's 73 and this is the explanation about this command so again you know this is so simple here it says what should be the input it's a D4 and 0 2 and keep in mind um, the the preamble and the post preamble and all the checksums are not shown here because uh, those values depends on the command and this is the input and you can see the input has got two bytes D4 and 0 2 and 0 2 is actually the command code and we know that D4 is corresponds to the TFI uh, which means uh, the this is the frame going from the host to the PN532 and the output has D5 followed by the command code again this command code is always one more than the input command code and followed by these uh, parameters or the data and again you know how to decode this data is uh, explained very well here and probably now we have already seen the last byte with the value 7 so if you just substitute the binary of 7 you get 111 it means uh, this board what I'm using supports uh, the type A type B and IS418092 or types of tax so let's see now with this as in an example I'm going to just you know go back to my program and, and decode it so here so we know that starting from here it's a preamble this the start of the packet is uh, these two bytes followed by the length followed by the the checksum for the length so when you add up these two bytes you will end up getting uh, zeros and these are the two bytes so this is a d4 and 0 2 and this is the checksum and followed by the post amble. so and this is you know the response the acknowledgement you get from PN532 and this is the response and if you if you just you know map the response to the frame structure 
here also we have got the preamble the packet uh, code the startup packet code followed by six bytes this are len field of six bytes this is the checksum so when you add these two you will get uh, zero and d5 this is uh, uh, the tfi uh, tfi byte and this is the 03 this corresponds to the 02 here and followed by the data so here you know you have to see the 06 means these six bytes so 1 2 3 4 5 6 so these six bytes corresponds to the length 6 and these two you can ignore probably you know the the documentation says whenever you get a response from PN532 you can uh, compute the DCS and compare with what you get so which I have not done it I know mean, I'm assuming that you know there will not be any electrical interferences you know between uh, the PN532 and my USB port so it is as easy as that the next thing is here I'm going to choose so before I choose the tag so you know that we have just got a bare board I'm going to place a, a paper bridge and I've taken this uh, Mifair ultralight because I've been mentioning about this tag you know from my couple of years and ultralight is one of the the tag every beginner should start with because it's very simple structure and it's very easy to understand so I'm going to choose so so basically you got a screen here so I'm going to move the screen so that you got uh, the video on the right side so the first thing we do is the activate so again if you look at here before you send any command to the uh, the tag you have to have this sam config command sent what i've done is you know uh, i have i've just you know as the comment says here the sam config can be sent on its own or i have prefixed that with the wake up sequence so i've been experimenting with the uh, uh, with and without you know i somehow found uh, with the wake up sequence you know it always works and probably you now you can also uh, just stick it with the wake up bytes so again the sam config i'm just going to take one more example of this command structure and this time we'll see this uh, the sam config is is easy to remember this uh, the page number it's uh, 66 so if page 66 list out all the commands and we're looking for the sam config and that is under the miscellaneous uh, group yeah the sam config and go to page number 89 there's a lot of theory and you know, a lot of information about this uh, SAM config and we are not using just a quick uh, walkthrough here we are using normal mode we are not using a virtual card nor a wired card nor a dual card so just you know, we just have to set uh, the SAM config to the mode value 0 1 again you know we we'll just go through this quickly D4 is uh, TFI 14 is the command code and this command takes uh, three parameters or three bytes as a parameter and it's it's very well explained here I don't have to go through this again and for a normal mode you just need the value of the mode and some of the bytes are optional here probably you now it's explained very well explained here so the output of this command is D5 followed by 15 so we are expecting you know uh, 15 and d5 as the output so here so this is the command d4 followed by 14 followed by 01 as i mentioned you know you just have to s use this uh, normal mode 01 the other two bytes are optional and this is the first response you get acknowledgement followed by the actual response and we just saw the response is just one five and this has got you know no parameter these these two bytes are the DCS and the post tumble after that I'm also using you know one more command called which comes under the RF configuration group called the maximum retries 
So this command, I don't want to go through this in our, the document. I just tell you what exactly is this. So when you instruct PN532 to look for a tag, so it will keeps trying and by default it keeps trying indefinitely until it finds a tag. But by sending this uh, maximum retries uh, command, you can uh, configure PN532 to, to look only for a certain number of times. So probably I have set this to look for only twice. So if the tag is not found in the second attempt, the third attempt you know will be in, uh, will indicate as an error. So again the documentation says you know what should be the parameter and what should be the response. This is the most important command here. Now this is the command that instruct the PN532 to, to actually look for a tag, activate it. So so many things you know are going um, are happening in the background. So I have made few videos about activating the type A where the reader writer first sends the REQA, you get the AQA and it uh, all those you know anti-collision sequence. Everything happens within the firmware. You just have to call this uh, in list tag. So since this is uh, so important command, I'm going to just go through this command quickly. So back to page 66 and look for the in in here means okay initiator so there's not nothing in or out so initiator command and list passive target okay here you know passive means uh, all these you know uh, tags are passive tags and these tags are powered by the pn532 rf field so the command is 4a and the page is 115 this command is also a bit complex as well so here we have to tell what type of tag you know we are looking so up to here d4 4a these are fixed values maximum target okay how many targets you want this to activate pn532 can activate uh, two tags so i'm going to show you, you know in my future videos uh, the data transfer between uh, two tags you know read data from tag 1 and pass on to tag 2 there's something very interesting concept uh, behind here as well you have to tell what type of tag you know you try to activate so you can activate either a type a with the value 0 or felica with the I've never seen this uh, felica tags so the type B you know is 0 3 innovation jewel tag so we have I made few videos about these two tags um, using the ACR122U. I still haven't made you know uh, videos for uh, the, the bare uh, PN532 uh, tags. Probably I'll be doing that in the future. If you want to pass any initiator data you can you can pass in the command as well. Again you know it's I don't have to just go through this thing you know just just keep on as I said you keep on reading keep on reading you know understand what it is so when you send the command what will be the the response the response will have the structure d5 followed by 4b followed by the nb tag the number of tags this is the most important thing if the value of this is 0 no tag has been activated if it is 1 then the remaining bytes will tell what type of tag is it, what UID is that, and so many other things you know about. So you can determine you know the tag type based on uh, the sense res, select res, and uh, it also gives you the UID. So you can also get the ATS. The tag is of uh, uh, IS14434 or ISO tags. You can also get ATS. And again, your documentation is uh, is very easy, and uh, you can understand that. So, in my case, we know that the tag I placed is uh, the ultralight, which has got the seven byte UID. So, I'm going to decode the response and see uh, what it is. So, D5 and 4B. Look at that. You know, the length of this response is 15 bytes. So, D5, 4B. 
zero one is the most important thing so this tells me that there is one tag detected and activated and this is like a indexed information say for example uh, it says you know okay one tag is found for tag number one this is all the information I've got if two tags are found you'll have tag number two this all information uh, you'll have it so here you know it's it follows all this uh, 0044 for we know this is a kind of a ATQEA type of data and followed by 7 this tells me the size of the UID so which is 7 so this is the UID of the tag so that's all you know that's all uh, the in, in list uh, passive target is now I'm going to read everything again you know this is this is uh, uh, this word is not about uh, teaching you know the structure of the MIFER ultralight because I got so many videos probably uh, maybe you know five to six videos um, I have done explaining the structure of uh, MIFER ultralight but let, let me focus more on the programming side of this uh, uh, PN532 so if you click read tag so you can see I've read all the 16 uh, pages of data and at the same time you'll also see all the commands going out uh, I'm sending to PN532 and where did I get these commands this is all the commands the documentation uh, speaks about say for example it's a the first command is read address 0 so if you have my software you know always see this read address 0 and from the 0th address you get 16 bytes of data and from address 4 you get 16 bytes of data so all these uh, four commands are are just about reading the data from the tag now the command I also mentioned the name of the command here it's called in data exchange so we're going to see what this uh, command looks like so we're back to page 66 see how easy is to remember this uh, list of commands so um, in that's uh, the data exchange command so this is in page number 1 27 so it, here you know what's happening here is 40 is the command code every time you send a command to the tag you have to indicate the tag ID so this is a logical number and this number you get from the list uh, passive target we, we have seen already this is number one so if you got two tags you know you have to you have to use either one or two followed by the data and this data is the command uh, that is sent to the tag and you just cannot use any data here you just have to go through this document all these um, commands are pre-programmed again there's some rules of information here guys it's, uh, it's uh, good information here about the frame structure and the list of all the commands you can pass is very well explained here since you know we are using a MIFA card the structure of this uh, data out looks like this the command address followed by the data and this is a read command so again you know here the explanation is uh, very clean it's a command the MIFA specific command the address and the data if you're reading you don't have the data you just have the command and address and these are the commands that are built into the firmware of PN532 you cannot use any other command which is not in the list so I have been reading uh, 16 bytes so I should be using the 30 followed by the address again it's a nice example here say for example in this case read 16 bytes from address 2 uh, you're going to pass uh, the four D four four zero zero one A zero. So A zero is used. A zero. If you go back, it's reading sixteen bytes, followed by the address. You're reading from page number two, and I think this is the one. Sorry. So this is the this is the read command. So it is uh, three zero. Sorry, it's so three zero four by zero two. So this command reads sixteen bytes. So if you look at this output, the address 0, I'm sending 30, 
zero zero again all this uh, preamble post amble and all else this is all here and the first you got the acknowledgement followed by the response so let's look into the response you know at least once so the response has got 19 bytes here one three and as you can see the response starts from uh, four one actually you know here every response has got the st starts from a status byte so probably you know in the documentation you will see the the output you know just go to document and make sure that we understand this uh, because you know here we got all the 16 16 bytes and just you know this uh, wrap over here probably now we'll try to increase this screen a little bit so here we got 16 bytes and this is a byte extra we're going to see that soon so here the output starts from d5 4 1 and as you can see it has got a status as well and followed by the data so if the the operation is successful the status will have the value 0 any other number indicates an error and somewhere in the document there's a list of error codes um, probably I'd better show you that as well so the list of error codes is right next to the the command page at 67 and if you're programming probably you will have a list of this the name and value pair in an array or in a dictionary type of data structure and likewise you know we have got to read page number 4 8 and 12 